Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. For today's class, alhamdulillah, is a very special class. We'll be finishing the remainder of uh, the Arabic alphabet. Okay, so we'll be doing essentially three letters today. But let's say four. So the first two letters we'll discuss is the letter Wow and the letter Ya. Now, these two letters are not unfamiliar to us because we spoke about them before. And I mentioned that the well and the year, specifically these letters, have dual functions. So they have two functions in the Arabic alphabet. On the one hand, they can be long vowels. They can be a mid, where they extend the short vowels. And that would be the only purpose. And the other function is that they would function as any other letter in the Arabic alphabet. So they will get a, a fatha, kasra, dhamma. They'll have a sound. They'll be read with a sukun and so on. Then we'll speak about the letter Hamza. The letter Hamza is a very special letter, um, very easy to pronounce. However, it has some a bit of detail when it comes to the shapes. Finally, we will speak about this letter over here, which is not really a letter on its own, right? It's actually just a different shape of a letter that we already covered. So essentially with today's lesson, all the letters that we'll be doing are not difficult letters at all in terms of pronunciation. However, uh, you have to, these are the letters that you have to focus on in terms of that you can easily get confused between these letters and other letters. Okay, so let's start with the letter well. Okay, so the letter well, we said, if we look at over here, what we know so far, when we see the letter wa, well, we know about the yeah, the well mad. For example, over here in this word over here, tubu, tubu. We know that this, the the well mad does not take any harakat. So no fatha, no kasra, no dhamma. It will just have nothing on there, just as it is there. So the first thing is said when we mentioned this before, when we spoke about the the mad letters, we see that they will have no harakat. Okay. The second thing we mentioned uh, about the mad letters, and specifically now the well mad, right? We said how do I identify the well mad? That right? firstly it will have no haraka. That is not enough. We need another sign. The second sign is that there will always be a dhamma on the letter before the well mad. And with those things, uh, those two things together, um, you have the well mad, right? So it will extend the dhamma to bu. However, what if we have a word like this over here, where we have the letter well, and they have a haraka. So we immediately know that this is not the well mad that we spoke about. So we see this well, it can have a fatha, kasra, or dhamma, and in this situation, it is called just well. So not well mad. So well mad means basically uh, wow the extension of the dhamma. Whereas if the wow has a haraka, it's just going to be wow like any other letter. And that's the letter we're going to speak about first. Okay. The letter wow, we don't need to speak about the shape. We already know the shape very well. The name is called wow. Right? And we can see from the first letter in the name, it has a W. And this letter has exactly that, the W sound. W, w, w. For example, in the word weird, weird. Is it like a W? What? That's the wow over there. Okay, let's get some words. We need 10 words with the W sound. Wonderful. It's good. Woo. Yes. Witness. West. Good. Woman. I want some with the W sound, with the W sound in the middle or the end of the word as well, right? We have five, so let's get five where the W sound is not bow. Excellent. Away. Yes. Own. Perfect. Powder. Yes. Perfect. One more. How beautiful. Okay. And we and we don't. Perfect. So one thing I want to say, because one example, uh, someone said woo, right? So we want to be careful when it comes to the well. 
it has the W sound, but not the W sound when it has like the H. Ooh, could it sound more like, like a, it could be like an H, it could be a, a H. Ooh, it's not clear. So we need the W sound, right? So like how, we, we, we do, right? So the, 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 the W, right, in, in basically in its crisp form without any other sounds. Okay, that's the little wow in terms of the sound. Let's apply the harakat on the, shouldn't be a challenge. So the w sound, which is a wow, if we add a fatha, it's going to be w, right? W plus a is w, w, okay? For example, in this word, wahaba, wahaba, wahaba. So when we see a, 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 a haraka on the wow, immediately we know this is Wa, wahaba. Okay, let's see what the kasra. We, 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 we dadu, we dadu. That's a name. We dadu, we dadu. Let's see what the dhamma. Wu, wu. So be careful of the the English w h o wu. That sounds more like a h. Wu. Woo, 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 woo. You must hear the W, woo, right? Woo, so let's do like a word in a word. Woo, ri, sa, woo, ri, sa, woo, ri, sa. Okay, woo, ri, sa. Let's see with the mud, right? So this is interesting. We have now the well, which is a normal letter. It's going to be extended with a mud letter. So let's see with the alif mud. Wa, very easy. Wa, and in a word, wa hida, which means one. Wa hida, wa hida. Take note of the bouncing sound, the jerking sound on the dal. Hida, wa hida. Okay. With the yamad, right? We can see there's a wa with a kasra, so that's we. It's going to be extended to we, we. In a word, na we do, na we do. I think that's a name. Na we do, na we do. Okay, excellent. With the dhamma, or mean with the well mat, now yet it becomes interesting because we have over here a well. This one over here is a well mat. The letter before it is a well with the dhamma, wu. So when the well mat was added, added, it extended the u sound to u. So instead of wu, it's woo. That's easy in terms of pronunciation. It's just sometimes we need a lot of getting used to if you are not used to seeing this. Woo. Okay. For example, the name and the prophet's name, Da Wooda. Da Wooda. Da Wooda. Da Wooda. Okay. Okay. Now, this is also where it becomes actually very interesting, right? But you just have to follow the, the, the process. Okay, what happens when the well has a sukun, right? So not the, the well mat, remember the well mat has nothing on there. When the well has a sukun, it's still the, no, the well that we've been speaking about now. So it still has the w sound. Remember the well mat don't really have a sound, it's just an extension. Whereas the well has a w sound like W. So this well over here has the w sound. And the letter before it is ta. And remember, a letter with a sukun must be pronounced with the letter before it as one unit. So this is going to be ta plus w, ta, w, ta, w, ta, w, right? Ta, w. Now that, don't read that as ta. Remember, we're going on transliteration as we've been practicing throughout the course. So that's ta, w, ta, w, ta, w. In a word that we all know, ta, w, ba, repentance. Tauba, tauba. Okay. Let's see here. Zau. So again, za plus the w. Za, w, zau, zau. In a word, zauju. Zauju. So you have to say the za and the w as one unit. Zauju. Zauju means husband or wife. It can be husband or wife. Zau. Ju, zau ju. Okay. Another example. Sau, sa, w, sa, w, sau, sau. 
in a word, very common word in the Quran and in Arabic in general, sawfa, 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 sawfa. Okay, need a little bit of practice, but once you get it, uh, it's easy and I'll tell you why. Here we have a qa, qa. Remember soft palate, qa plus the wa, qaw, 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 qaw. Okay, in a word, qawmi. It means tribe or people or nation. Qawmi, qawmi. Now, why is it very easy to practice this? Not necessarily to get it immediately, but to practice very easy because a wow with a sukun will only have a fatha before it. You won't have a kasra or a dhamma before it. If you have a, a, a wow with no haraka and a dhamma before it, it's going to be the mad, right? And I'm going to show you now. Because we want to know how exactly do I differentiate between the wow with a sukun and the wow mad, right? Because the well, it's, it's, it both look like a well. So sometimes you can get confused, but we want to know exactly how. So when you get confused, what can what strategy can apply to identify what exactly is this? Okay, let's look at this over here. So let's take a practical example. So yeah, so this is a well, my dear. Tuba, tuba. The well has nothing on, and there's a dhamma before. We know that's a well, med. Tuba. Well, if you look at the well with the sukun, here it's going to be. Tauba. So the well mud is the extension of the two. Tuba. Whereas here it's actually a letter. Tauba. Okay. Zuju. Zauju. Sufa. Saufa. So you can see the letter before is also very critical, right? Because you have to read the letter before as well. So in, in this one over here at the bottom, it's starting with a su. And you just extend that su fa. Over here, it's starting with a sa. And you say the sa, and then the wa, sa fa. Okay. Now, I want um, quickly, I want you, any one of you, or all of you, as, as uh, anyone, to identify differences between these two, between the wow on the left, which is just the wow, and the wow mad. You can refer to say the wow, the left, the wow on the right. Um, so the, I highlighted all of them. There's a comment, there's a, a difference that is just repeated, uh, and that is, uh, 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 you could say it's kind of set, right? So who can tell me of one difference? The well mad has no harakat. Yes. Okay, mad has dhamma and the others have fatha. Okay, so the mad has a dhamma before it, and the well mad over here has a fatha before it. That's a good answer. The well mad, had a dhamma before it, but no haraka. Excellent, that summarizes it nicely. So dhamma before the well mad, and the well mad has no haraka. Okay. Let's have another answer. Need one more person to say, you can just repeat, or if you agree with it, if it's been said, that's fine. So we, we have so far that the letter before, okay, that's good. So if you agree, type agree, or just say yes or anything, right? So the letter before the well mad has a dhamma, the letter uh, before the well has a fatha. Okay, the well itself over here, right, has a sukun, right? And the well on the, on the right and the well mad don't have a sukun. Okay, perfect, perfect. That's very important. Okay, so the well, the first difference is that the well will have a sukun on it. The well mad will have no sukun, right? On it. The well will have a fatha before it. And the well mad will have a dhamma before it. It's just extending that dhamma. And this exactly is once you wrap your head around this, you sit. Then you just need to practice how to say the well with a sukun. Tawba, zawju, sawfa. Then you just need to practice that. And then you got that uh, sorted. Okay. And this is ex exactly how it is in the Quran. So to differentiate, they do this, right? So they will, they will put no sukun on the well mad. Even though the sukun just means no harakat. So when we say the mad is no harakat, it kind of have a sukun. And, but what they do is they don't put it on the, so you know that's well mad. And on this side, the sukun is there, so you know that this is the well with the sukun. Okay. 
Now let's move on to the year. Now the year is going to follow the exact same steps, right? So let's quickly run through the year. So the year met, we started off with the year met, what we've done before. And this word over here, Sira. We can see the year is an extension. The year met is an extension of the Kasra. So instead of C, it became C Ra. Okay, so it will have no Fatha, no Kasra, no Dhamma, no Harakat. Okay. And also, if you look at the uh, letter before the Miyamad, it always has a Kasra. And we agreed on that, that the letter before has a Kasra. But if we look over here in this type of word, that we might see this word, where we see a Ya that has a Haraka, or it has Harakat, either have a Fatha, Kasra, or Dhamma, or a Sukun for that matter. In this case, this is just Ya. Just yeah. So when we say, if I just say the letter yeah, then I'm referring to that one. If I want to say the yeah mud, I have to say yeah mud, right? Okay, move on. So we are already familiar with the shapes already of the yeah. So we can move on to the sound. So the yeah, as you can see from its name, it's the Y. Yeah, yeah, like yes, yeah, seen, right? It's the Y, like yogurt. Okay, so quickly, let's get some 10 words. Right, we want some words with the Y sound in the beginning, some in the middle or end. Yesterday, excellent. Yesterday, so there's two Y's in there, that's good. Yo, yo, brilliant. Yo, yo, again. Yo, yo, yet. Okay, that's three. Yummy, yes, there's two Y's there, yummy. Papaya, youth, yellow, yellow, yell, yes. Yours, one more, yield. Okay, excellent, and boy, right? Okay, so yeah, we should have no problem with the letter yeah. So the yeah with the fatha, it's gonna be simple. Yeah plus the ah uh is yeah, okay? In a word, ya da ka, ya da ka, ya da ka, it means your hand, okay? Yeah, with the kasra is going to be yi, like yin yang. But here's the thing: um, it's I never, I haven't found really yeah with a kasra in a word. It's very rare. There's maybe one or two words. So we're not going to do um, a word. I'm not going to make up a word right now because we want to stick to now to words that are actually found in Arabic and in the Quran. So let's move to uh, let's give another example of the yeah with the fatha. So here we go. Yes, me no. Yes, me no. It's a name. Yes, me, no. Yes, me, no. Okay. Yeah, with the Dhamma, you, you. In a word, you read, you read, you read, you read. And if you notice, you'll see that have, we have both years in here. We have the year, which is just year, and we have the year mad over here, which is extending. The kasra on the ra. So instead of re, it's becoming re. So you re do. So there we can see how the year, so it's one letter, but it has two functions. It functions as a long vowel, as a mid, or it, it functions as a normal letter or a half. Okay. The year with the mid letters. Okay. Yeah, with the alif mid. Yeah. So we just extend. Yeah. Yeah. In a word, ya si no, ya si no, ya si no, right? And we can see over here again, we have a ya mad and the ya in one word, right? So here the, the first one is the ya being extended, ya, and then there's the ya mad, right? There's a question, so we'll get to that question. Um, in this lesson, inshallah. So let's look at the ya uh, mad over here. So the ya with the ya mad also very re, but however, there are a few words, very few. So I brought some word, one word here, but challenging. So ye with the mad, ye, ye. Okay. Yuh, ye kum, yuh. Ye kum. So here's interesting because here we can see a, a, a normal year being extended by a year mid. And it's following, it's 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 meeting all the requirements. The year mid has nothing on there, and there's a kasra before it. Yuh 
يكم اوكي يا وذا اي واو مد يو يو يوسف 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 that's the prophet's name and it's a very common name that people have okay يا وذا سكون again important just like the wow so look look at over here here we have a ya with a sukun and a ra before it. We done the letter rain with a fatha ra. Here we go. We have the ya sound with the ra. So ra yi rai rai rai. And most of us say this word every day in our salah. Here we go. Rai ri rai ri rai ri rai ri al maghdub alayhim in surah fatiha. Okay. Lay. With the la. Y. Lay. 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 Like. Alay. Him. In Surah Fatiha as well. A. Lay. Him. Alay. Him. Okay. With the ha. We have another example here. Hey. So ha. The letter we done in the last lesson. Ha. Plus the y. Y. Hey. هاي هاي تا هاي تا هاي تا okay final example we have a و و with a فتحة و plus the ya is going to be way way و ي way here we go way لك way لك way لا Wailaka. Now that actually means be careful. It's actually a threat. Someone wants to threaten you, you say wailaka. Be careful. Okay. Now let's look at the difference between the ya mat and the ya with a sukun. The normal ya when it has a sukun. Okay. Look at all these examples over here. That is bina. Bina. Baina. Zidu. Zaydu. Hita. Hayta. And again, if you highlight the ya with the sukun and the ya with the mat, we will see there's a pattern that, like we said, the ya will have a sukun, the ya mat will have no sukun. The ya will have a fatha before it, and the ya mat will have a kasra before it. And I want to emphasize this is when the ya has a sukun, right? When they have no sukun, it has a fatha kasra dhamma, it's just going to be ya, yi, you, simple. Okay. Now, ya, I need everyone to really focus, right? It's a very important letter, very easy to pronounce, but it really appears so often, so common, and the letter is a bit tricky. Well, not very. Inshallah, we're going to solve it today. So this letter is called, firstly, it's called Hamza, right? Now, one thing I want to tell you about this letter, this letter is going to be an exception to the rule that we spoke about when we said that every letter, the sound of the letter is found in the first part of its name. Basically, the first letter in the letter's name, that's going to be the sound of this letter. Now, this letter is an exception, right? Because the name of this letter is just the name, right? It, uh, the sound of the letter is not in, this le in, in the name in, or in any way. Okay, so look at the shape. It looks a bit like kind of like, kind of like a ayn, but with no tail. It's called Hamza. The sound of this letter is, is very simple, right? We all can do it, we do it all the time. So basically this letter, when it has a fatha, it's going to be a, right? So it basically sounds like a fatha, a. When it has a kasra, it's i. And when it has a dhamma, it's u. So it's literally a, or i, or u, right? But we can't really give it a specific sound without a haraka. So let's see. So it has, basically we can say it has a, a sound like apple, kind of, okay? So let's see. Let's give it a fatha. It's going to be a, uh, as simple as that. And in transliteration, when you see a text, Arabic text, and you see, so I'm going to answer that question. Don't worry about the alif, right? So I would ask you, leave your questions for this at the end of this lesson, at the end when I finish this. Just trust me, believe me. So this shape over here, right? That is normally how the Hamza is represented. The A is the Fatha, 
right? So when you read a text and you see that, you know that's a Hamza. Okay, Hamza with the Fatha, a, a. For example, Amira, a, Mira, a, Mira. Okay, with a Kasra, like we said, e, e, right? So you will see it like that, e. So the I there is the Kasra. The Hamza is that mark over there. E, E. Like reading like I, E, E. Now, in this word over here, we have Juz, E. Juz, E. Juz, E. Okay. What the Dhamma is going to be, like I said, U. Very simple. U. A, E, U. U. In a word, Sama'u, 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 right? Simple so far. Okay. Let's move on to the mud. And I, I want you to really focus on what we're doing now. What we're doing now is we're focusing on the sound of the Hamza. Before we speak about shapes, you first want to get the sound right when it comes to the Hamza. Okay. Uh, so the A. Uh, Plus the alif mid, like any other letter. Ah, for example, Quran. Quran. Here we go. Qur, Qur with a qaf, not a kaf. Qur, an. Qur, an. That's Quran. Qur, an. With a yamad, e becomes e. Iman, Iman, that's Iman, faith, Iman, Iman, okay, U, so from U, at the well met, U, Qara, U, so Q, R, U, Qara, U, okay, now, take note over here, when the Hamza has a sukun, right, it has the sound, like someone said there in the chat, like, uh-oh. Now, when you say, uh, you see how I stop there? Uh, or when I say, uh, uh, or when you're shocked, you say, uh. That is actually the Hamza sound with a sukun. Let's see here. So, this would be two, plus the Hamza with a sukun, two. You see, it's like a sudden stop, two. Tu, like uh oh, tu. In a word, tu, minu. So don't press too hard. Tu, you just have to stop, right? Just block E. Tu, minu. Tu, minu. To believe, tu, minu. Okay. Ra, right? So not ra, because the hands has a sukun, so it's like a stop. You have to cut your breath, like uh oh, uh. Ra, okay. Ra. Ra su. So that means head. Ra su. Final example, same sound, the. So instead of the, the, there's going to be a cut there like a, uh, the, the. And the word the, boo. The, boo. It means wolf. Okay. Now, now, someone asking, does it appear on top of an elif? And does the sound the same like the alif sound you're going to see now, right? Did someone ask something about the shadda? We're going to do the shadda in the next lesson, but I'll, I'll speak more about that, that question at the end of the class. Now, is everyone with me so far with regards to the sound of the Hamza? We haven't spoke about shapes yet. We're going to speak about shapes now. But how are you feeling about the sound? Is it, is it, is it okay, right? It's, it's manageable. It's good. It's fine. There's no serious issues there. Okay. Now, let me tell you something about the letter Hamza. If we just go back, if I just go back and we look at these words here at the bottom, this words, look at this, tu, minu, ra, su, di, bu. You'd see the Hamza, it looks so out of place. It's like so odd. It's like just there in the middle of nowhere, not attached to anything. And it's just making the word look cut up. So th this letter is actually special because what this letter decided to do is that it's going to use certain letters 
as kind of like a base to stand on. Specific letters, so not any letter, very specific letters he chose to use sometimes as a base just to stand on, like just for show, right? Like hanging your coat on the hanger. So that's what Hatha Hamza done. Chose certain letters to use as a base. When the Hamza is on those letters, you will ignore the letter, whatever letter it is, and only look at the Hamza. It's basically the Hamza. The letter is just a housing. It's just a base and a platform for the Hamza to stand on. But the letter itself is going to have no relevance. Once a letter, once the Hamza becomes on top or goes on to another letter, that letter itself becomes totally relevant. And that's the hardest part about, because what I, the reason why I ask you, how are you with the sound of this letter? Because some people struggle when it comes to the Hamza, but you need to know why you're struggling because then you say the Hamza is a difficult letter. But we saw now in terms of sound, the Hamza is an easy letter. Now, when it comes to the different shapes, it is 100% the same Hamza. It's not a different Hamza. Just the Hamza is now, it uses other letters as a base. So now it becomes confusing because you see two letters and you think, wait, which letter should I read? And then that's why uh, some people say the Hamza is difficult. But if you focus on that and tell yourself, look, I can't say the Hamza. I know how to pronounce the Hamza with the Fatha, Kasra, Dhamma, with the Sukun. So when the Hamza is seen on another letter and you know that these letters are just a base, it's just the housing, completely ignore, just read the Hamza as normal, then you should know that you shouldn't really have a problem. You should just adjust to the different shapes. Okay. The three letters that the Hamza use as a base is the Alif, the ya and the well. Okay, let's speak about that. So here's the alif for example. What happens? The hamza will use the alif as a base, so it will land itself on top of the alif or maybe even below it. But the alif has no relevance there. The alif is actually only used as an amad letter. The alif itself isn't really uh, a really a letter that's pronounced. But because the hamza uses the alif very often as a housing, the alif became famous, right? And people started calling the alif a hamza, or they started calling the hamza an alif. But focus, there is only one letter over here, and that's the hamza. The alif is just a housing in this case. Let me show you. So over here, you can see we have an alif. You can see the alif in its normal shape, semi-cursive. There's a hamza on top, and the hamza has a fatha. So here we're not going to read sala. It's not an alif mad. Here it's an hamza. And a hamza of the fatha is what? A. So this is going to be sa'ala. Sa'ala. That alif has no relevance. So sa'ala. That is a hamza 100% there. The alif is just a housing. Another example. Here we go. You can see the hamza is now at the bottom of the alif. And the alif is the only letter where the hamza goes at the bottom sometimes when it has a kasra. The important thing is you can see the hamza came into this alif. The alif, no significance, it's just a housing. The hamza is going to be pronounced e. And here we have e ma na. E ma na. E ma na. Right? E ma na. There's only a hamza here. There's nothing um, extra except the alif there that is being used as a housing. Okay, here we go. Hamza with a dhamma on the alif. So it's a hamza with a dhamma. U, u, us ta -thu. means teacher. Us -ta -thu. So if I took the alif away and I put that hamza at the bottom with no alif, like I've done before, many of the words that we've done, right? Um, so, yes, so the alif when, it, when, it, when in this situation, it's not only not regarded as a mat, it's not even regarded in any way. It's just the housing for the Hamza. The Hamza is just using it, it's like, come here, I need you, I need to stand on you so that I can see, right? And then the, the alif becomes irrelevant. And I want to say this also, right? The, 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 the Hamza, once it comes on the letter, right? You, you need to 
tell yourself the first thing is that look immediately at the Hamza, give no regard whatsoever to the letter at the bottom, no matter what shape it's coming in. You can only pronounce one letter. So in this case, it's going to be us tadu. And in many of the words that I used before, when we've done the Hamza, right? I used the Hamza and I, and I, wrote, it in, I wrote it in a different way. So I wrote it without the alif and without the, without the, the housing letter. Right, and we pronounced it perfectly normal. So when I write it now in the correct way, whether it be on the alif or whatever letter, we have to read it the same as we read it over there. It's just the hamza. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Someone say, please say the first example. Okay. No problem. So let's go over here. So let's look at this here. Right. So why this is confusing is because you're seeing an alif there at the bottom, and the alif is connected and. There, it looks so nice, like it's ready to be an alif mad, right? It's ready to be sala. It looks so. But this is something you have to get used to, right? And you will get used to it as you look at more examples. And it, I, from my experience, this does take some time, right? But once it settles in, it settles in, right? So because there's a hamza on the alif, and you will know that the hamza uses certain letters as housing. So that makes it much easier. It's not going to be anywhere. So you already identify the alif as... Uh, if you see an Hamza on there, Hamza on there, it's an ha you, you ignore the alif, just read the letter on top. And that's actually a general rule in Arabic. If you see two letters, one, the, well, the one another one on top, you read the top one, right? So that is sa'ala. Sa'ala. Sa'ala means to ask. Okay? Here we go. Imana. The alif is just the housing. Imana. Here we go. Us. Ustadu, ustadu. And this is why I left the alif for last. So many were asking in the beginning, where is the alif? And because I wanted you to know this properly, right? That it's actually an alif and there's a hamza on top. We're going to read the hamza. But you need to know that these are two different things. But when they come together, we see the hamza, we know the alif is just a housing. Okay, let's move on to the year. Uh, when the hamza, come on the year, uh, it's going to lose its dots, right? You're not going to see a year with dots when it has a Hamza on there because they, it's just a housing. It's not anymore a year. You can forget about that letter being a year now. It's just a Hamza. And the whatever letters at the bottom is just a housing. So for an example here, um, this over here with the, what's highlighted in red is a, a Hamza with a Fatha. A. Qu ri a. Qu ri a. That means um, it was red. Let's look at another example. And here you can see, right? And this is normally why people become confused because you think that, wow, the Hamza has so many different shapes. But in reality, if you look at this over here, the, what the, 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 the shape that the Hamza is housed on, it's actually the year shape. A year looks like that in the, in the beginning uh, of, a, of a word. That's exactly how the year looks. It just don't have dots in this case because it's just acting as a housing for the Hamza, but the Hamza will be read as normal. And we can see the Kasra here is at the bottom, right? But the moment the Hamza show up, the show stops. It's Hamza only. It's like the showstopper. The Hamza, once it goes onto a letter, the letter becomes irrelevant. Your eyes shoot straight onto the Hamza. So this would be Ra Ibu. Ra I. Bu, normal Hamza, ra ibu, means we're absent. Okay, here we go. Ma, la, remember we said the lamb with the alif, the past two lessons, we said that the lamb with the alif will take a unique shape. So that's a lamb with the alif mad, la, so ma, la, i, again, same thing. Ka, ma, la, i, ka, ma, la, i, ka. Malaika, normal Hamza. The final letter that the Hamza use as a housing is the letter Wow. Okay. Like in the song example over here, right? So when you see the Wow, you get overwhelmed. Wow, there's a Wow. Why is there so many letters? The letter on top of another letter. I see a Hamza. So whatever letter at the bottom is irrelevant. It's as if it is not there with confidence, right? Don't hesitate. 
in believing that it's as if that letter is absolutely not there, right? And I'll tell you, maybe add a tip why to maybe just make it a bit more easier to understand later. So this would be the Hamza with the Fatha is A. Forget about the letter at the bottom. The Hamza with the Fatha is A. So this is A. The wow well is just a housing. Su a lu. Su a lu. Su a lu. Su a lu. Right? There's the Hamza with the Fatha and the Alif mad at the, uh, after it. So that's a. Su a lu. Okay. Another example. Here we go. Ra u fu. Ra u fu. Ra u fu. Right? It's as if this wow is not there. We're reading the Hamza with the Dhamma. Ooh. The wow mat after it. Fu. Ra u fu. Last example. Jaza uhum. So here we go. Ja za u hum. Jaza uhum. Ja za u hum. Jaza uhum. Right, so let me just conclude on this. So let's draw a conclusion. The Hamza often uses the alif, ya, or wow as housing. So it might appear on the alif, on the ya, or on the well. Right? And when this happens, always read only the Hamza. That's it. You see the Hamza? Don't even give that next letter. And it has zero relevance in terms of reading. Zero, absolutely zero point zero 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 zero. Not even a half a percent of relevance. It won't affect your reading. You just read the Hamza. So the Hamza uses all the mad letters as housing. Yes. So if you want to look for a pattern, I can say yes. It chose the. Or it was looking which letters can it use as housing. They chose, they said, let's take the mud letters. Why don't we just take the mud letters as housing, right? Um, I don't know why, but yes. So the, it uses the mud letters as housing. Okay. Now, okay, so that's that. How is everyone with that? Are you grappling with the concept? Are you understanding it? Let me tell you something actually now before. I just said, right, that the, the, the letter at the bottom, the letter that the Hamza chose to use as housing, right? I said that it should have zero relevance, absolutely zero relevance. But now you still want to ask, right? So now I know there's, a, I know we have some lawyers in the, in, in the class today. So you might be asking, yes, but why nothing happens without a reason? There must be a reason. Now I'll tell you why. The reason actually has nothing to do with reading. It has to do with grammar, right? So this is just to just, just to give some contentment to your heart. If you, you're kind of curious, I just want to know really why. It has to do with the grammar, actually it has nothing to do with the reading. It's just because the Arabs, sometimes one letter, words changed over time, right? Word changed over time, over time, over time, one letter replaced another letter. So sometimes what they do is they do these things to show like, for example, that the origin of this letter was actually this one, then they'll put it on top of the letter or they put it at the bottom. Whatever they do, right? Whatever they, they, uh, they do. So it does have a reason, but it has nothing to do with reading. It has no practical uh, um, a value, right? To know, like, in terms of reading, okay, why is it literally? So, like I said, just follow the rule that you know that the Hamza will come on, find out the Alif, yeah, well. And when you see it in that sense, in that way, you read only the Hamza, just completely, completely, 100% ignore the letter that it's using as a housing. Okay? Okay. Um, I hope you don't understand. If you didn't understand, do watch uh, this part again. Do the exercises. It'll take you some time to get used to this, especially if it's your first time. Um, but this is why I left the, the, the Hamza to the very end, because it's the only way that you will really um, uh, understand the Hamza. Right? So there's a difference between an alif and a hamza. Sometimes people call the hamza an alif and the alif a hamza, which is fine. Because sometimes when you see a hamza on an alif, it's read as a hamza. So sometimes people call it alif. Sometimes people call it hamza. It doesn't matter. As long as you understand 
how to do it. If you see a Hamza and Alif, or oh, yeah, or oh, well, that's Hamza. Done. End of story. Okay. Well, let's do the final, final part. The final thing. We are done with absolutely all the letters now. Alhamdulillah. We covered all the letters. All this lefty, this is one thing, right? It's not really a new letter. This is called the tide ta. We've done the letter ta. It's called the tide ta. And if you look closely, you'll see over here, look at the shape, you'll see. It actually, you know, the ta will have that smiley face. So yeah, there's the two dots. And you can see the ta will kind of just tied up. They call it the tide ta. Okay. And it's read as a ta. We'll see now. Now, in the last lesson, we spoke about the letter ha. And we said that the letter ha at the end of the word, it will look one of the shapes it takes is this shape over here, right? And let's look at an example. Like there, you can see that word over there. In that word over there at the end, that's the letter ha. Right, so let's read it. So there we have a, a, a Hamza. A, a, khi, he. A, khi, he. It means his brother. Okay. Qaw, ma, hu. Qaw, ma, hu. It's a ha at the end. Now, here's another shape of the ha. Now, I didn't, I didn't show this to you in the last slide, but I put it in the, the summary slide, right? So what happens is, when the ha is at the end of the word, it will look like this one over here. But if it's for, if, if there is a semi-cursive letter before it, meaning that the ha cannot join to the letter before it, and it appears at the end of the word, and it's going to look like this, right? Like this over here. Of course, you see there's an alif. Here's a the, can't connect. So it's just going to take the shape of a circle, right? So this is going to be ra a hu. Ra'ahu. Here we go. A'khadahu. 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 That's the letter ha. What, I want to, what we want to add now, what we want to talk about now is if these exact shapes, these two shapes, appear with two dots on top, like the ta, then these letters are not ha, they are the letter Ta, exactly the letter ta. So you'll know by the two dots on top. So when you practice these, these, these two, practice them side by side um, so that you can get used to it. But this is a letter ta. Okay. So for example, this word over here, rahmata. Rahmata. So not a ha, rahmata. That means mercy. Rahmata. It's a normal ta with a fatha. Okay. Here we go. Ma, la, e. See, there's a hamza or the kasra. It's using the letter ya as a housing. E. So, ma, la, e, ka, ti. Ma, la, e, ka, ti. Angels. Okay. Fa, ta, tu. So, here's it at the end of the word. And the letter before it is semi cursive. So, that's why it just took that shape because it can't connect to the alif. So yeah, fa ta tu, fa ta tu, and this is an interesting example because here we have the letter ta, and there's another ta, but it has two different shapes. Okay, mal fi ra tu, mal fi ra tu, mal fi ra tu. Okay, now what's left is to to ask, um, okay, why did they do this? Why is the letter why does it have, why does that why does it need another shape right let me first say that this shape whether it's the ha or the ta only appear at the end of the word right only appear at the end of the word number two the reason why this is kind of like a separate thing because it's more of a grammar thing you know sometimes uh, when it comes to reading arabic they have a lot of different shapes and you try to figure out why 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 what's the reason sometimes it uh, you can't really know the reason immediately because it's related to grammar, right? So when it comes to learning, you just have to kind of just do that until you learn what's the reason. Now, in simple terms, this ta is a ta, this one over these two over here, that adds at the end of the word, this is in grammar, to indicate that these words are feminine. So in Arabic, you have masculine and feminine words. Doesn't mean if it's a feminine word, it must be a, a, talking about a female. It's just Arabic feminine word. Arabic words, I mean, male, masculine words, 
feminine words. This ta over here indicates that this word uh, is feminine, right? And that's important in grammar because there's other rules based on it. Okay, so now you know that, okay, there's a reason for this. You just have to know that that's also a ta. Don't need to go anything deeper or beyond that in like, uh, uh, you, like where you confuse why, why? It's just the, the ta. Okay, why does the ha have so much shapes? Because the ha is an important letter because it, it's the ha is commonly a pronoun, right? So it can have more shapes. Long story, short, any end of the day, it's just the letter ha in different shapes, nothing different about it. Okay, so Saruk is asking a, a, an important question. Um, I'll answer that one also at the end of the class. So let me just say this over here. We now completed the Arabic alphabet. So what I want to do is we want to read through the Arabic alphabet, the names, uh, bearing in mind that we said when we just started the first core, the first lesson, I said that one of the tips I said when it goes to learning the Arabic alphabet, I said, learn the correct pronunciation of the name of the letter. Because the sound of the letter is found in its name. So if you get the letter sound right in its name, it's in a good time to practice the letter. So you can practice the sound of the letter and say the Arabic alphabet's um, name. But if you say the name incorrect, then when you learn reading, then now you are now uh, pronouncing the, let the word the letter correct, it becomes, you know, can become confusing. Okay, so let's see. Okay, the first letter, Alif. Now, I want to do this approach. I'm going to mention the letter and I'm quickly going to remind you of some of the things we spoke about each letter. Because remember, each letter we're going to look at as a person, Alif. So we said about the Alif, it's a lit letter of Mad. It extends the Fatha from A to A. That's the function of the letter Alif in general. Then we've done letter Ba, Ta, Tha. Very simple letters, dot to the bottom, top, different amount of letters. Ba, Ta, tha. Okay. Jim, ha, kha. Jim or simple, ha. Simple letter come from the throat. And we spoke about the kha. The kha with the first letter we spoke about that has the full sound. Kha. A, kha. Jim, ha, kha. Then we've done the dal and the dal. Very simple. Then the ra and zai. The ra, the second letter, which is full. Ra, zai. Right? So the, the other two letters was sin, sheen. Very simple letter. S sin, sheen. Then we done the, the we started with the heavy letters. Remember the bold tongue? Sod, bod. The bold tongue, right? So not sod and dod. So, sod, bod, the heavy letters. And also the po, va. We said we have to make your tongue like a spoon, right? Like a bowl shaped. Po, va. Then the ein and rain. Ein, we spoke about in detail, and the rain was the last of the full letters. Ra, rain. Then we have the fa. And the qaf, sorry, the qaf is the last of the full letters. Fa, qaf. Qaf is said from the soft palate. Qa, qa, qaf. And then kaf. Kaf is the simplest, like the K from the hard palate. Ka, kaf. And then the lam, meme, noon. And then the ha, wow, ya. Final thing I want to say is that if you look at over here, all these letters are simple, they have one function. Except for the alif, the wow, and the ha, they have two functions. They can either be mad letters, right? Uh, sorry, specifically the wow and the ya. They can either be mad letters or they can be normal letters. The alif is only mad, right? And the last thing we've done is the hamza. And the hamza is a simple letter, a, i, u, and it uses the letters of mad or the alif, the wow, and the ya as a housing form, right? So that's it um, from, that's it from, from my side in terms of the letters.